chapter 5, verse, verse number 6 says, uh, when Jesus noticed him lying there, how was he lying there? He was lying there how? Helpless, the Bible says, knowing that he had already been a long time, long time in that condition. He said to him, do you want to become well? Jesus asked his brother, are you really in earnest or are you really serious about getting well? Somebody say amen to the reading of God's word. Amen. Tonight we are in part two of our Fresh Start series, and this is just simply, we're going to pick up what we left off, Kick the Crutch Part Two. Kick the Crutch Part Two. If you're anticipating God speaking to you, come on, put your hands together for that. All right, I got to dive right into it, you all. If you were not a part of part one, go and come on, grab part one, and you kind of put them together, and you'll be able to kind of see in the sense what it is that, we, that we're doing. I can't set it up the way that I desire, but I'm going to give you the meat of what it is I believe that God is saying for us on tonight. I believe as God has given us this brand new year as we're embarking on this 2022, I believe it's something that God desires to do all in all of our lives. He wants to give us, as this series title suggests, he wants to give all of us a fresh fresh start but a fresh start just doesn't take place because it's January but a fresh start takes place whenever it is I make up in my mind to obtain and to grab and to do everything that God has called for me to be able to obtain and be able to do can, can I remind you that you got as much of God as you desire to have he's omnipotent he's omniscient he's all powerful all knowing and he says I will come and be with you I will come and sup with you I will come and abide with you but you got to earnestly seek me and that's what we've been doing in these 19 days as we've been praying and as we've been coming closer to the Lord, he's been giving us more of him. But if I want everything that God desires for me to have, I can't just come any kind of way. I got to learn how to kick some crutches. Yes, I do. I got to kick some crutches. Let me, let me remind you what kicking the crutch looks all about, well, what it's all about rather. It is a figure of speech that describes something that is used as a surrogate or a substitute for a moral ideal or, a, or for a more ideal ideal solution or approach we, we discussed two weeks ago whenever it is you and I have a figurative crutch it is something that we use as a substitute for the real thing God didn't create us to have any aid or any assistance as relates to a crutch he created us to be able to stand on our own to be able to walk on our own to be able to do what we need on our own and sometimes we do need assistance but I believe that sometimes you and I get to the place where we where we did where we long and desire or we hang on to assistance much longer than we need to hang on to and every now and then because we've allowed ourselves to get dependent on something or dependent on a person or get dependent in a situation even as we'll see tonight I believe that God says that before you be able to enter in everything that I have for you you got to learn how to kick these crutches and here this is really when you sum it all up with the urban dictionary I love how they sum it up at the bottom of this definition it just simply says it is a term that also implies a degree of habitual laziness, a, a, a degree of habitual laziness. That is that is really where, where, where many individuals are. I told you that you can have as much God as you desire to have. You can have as much of him as you want. But what stops us, what hinders us? I, I am the only thing that stops me from obtaining what it is that God desires for me to have. So in order for me to be able to be able to walk in, to manifest, to gravitate, to hold on to I got to say I'm not going to be like I was in previous seasons of my life I'm not just going to sit around and think things are going to happen because I want them to happen but no I'm going to do everything that I need to do so I can be able to flow in what God has for me somebody ought to say amen somebody ought to say amen we, we, we talked we talked two weeks ago about the fact that that this year we made some declarations we made some decrees we said that this year I will be willing I must be willing to discover, develop, and deploy purpose. Somebody say purpose. Uh, th th this year, I must be willing to discover and develop and deploy purpose because God has put us here for a reason. God has put us here in the earth for a particular purpose, for a particular reason. And this is what you and I need to be doing. I will forever be limited. I will forever be handicapped. I will forever be to the point that I'm not able to fully flow in what God wants me to flow in as long as I'm not flowing in purpose. And it's the enemy's 
job to do everything it can to keep us away from purpose. But I must be willing to be able to say, God, you know what? It's not easy. God, it's not. You didn't tell me that it wasn't going to be no obstacles. You didn't tell me there wasn't going to be no opposition. But God, I'm going to get to the place of where I'm, I know that I've been born for purpose and on purpose. So I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk in my purpose. Look, look what, look what John says as he writes even his gospel in John chapter 20, verse 31. The Bible says, but these, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Lord, have mercy. I think that's one of the most cold-blooded verses in the gospel of John because John tells us at the end of his book why he wrote his book in the first place. He said he wrote his book so you and I can be able to believe that Jesus Christ is who he is and that through him we can have life that through him you and I can have purpose that's all I'm trying to say we think that life is a, we think life is about cash and clothes and cars we think life is about being booed up and bathed up and being on my vacation that's not that's not what life is all about I know what the prophet Gump said that life is like a box of chocolate life not even a, like a box of chocolate but can I tell you that life is about having a fresh and a real relationship with God that's what life is all about and whenever it is that I come into a, a real a real head-on collision with who it is that God is that's when I will begin to be able to walk in purpose and be able to have this abundant life that God told us that we're supposed to have somebody say abundant life abundant life I, I defined abundant life for you it is the, the condition of living or a state of being alive especially healthiness happiness exuberance energy vitality and the like is there anybody in here under the sound of my voice that don't want to be identified with this definition of abundant life and God said this can be ours in fact it already belongs to us but we got to be able to move towards it and the only way you can move towards it you got to kick your crush you got to kick your crush I, I'm, I'm trying to set it up for you but I, I don't got time to spend time with it the way that I desire to but God says I got to learn how to move in purpose it's our responsibility to discover our purpose develop our purpose deploy our purpose but the enemy keeps us in idleness because we don't feel like we'll, we, we know our total purpose. The enemy keeps us outside of God's best because we're waiting on a voice or we're waiting on a dream or we're waiting on a prophetic word. We're waiting on something else. And God says, all I need you to do is whatever it is you find your hand to do. I need you to do it with all your might. I need you to be useful in the body of Christ, useful in your family, useful on your job. Just be able to lend me, lend me your body and I'll let you run right into purpose is what, is what God says. Let me, let me get here and hasten to tell you what I want to give you tonight because we discussed that this year I must be willing to break bad habits come on I gave you this and create and maintain what good habits we, we must be willing to do that we, we we lift this up from our savior from John chapter 5 it says and there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus did what went up to Jerusalem there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem I love this because I explained this to noonday earlier this earlier today that Jesus did not come into this earth to show us what God looks like in the earth that's not what his life was about he could have did what he desired to do that's where the miracles come from from. that's where the raising of the dead come from but really and truly Jesus who restrained himself willingly he willingly he did willingly disrobed himself of some of his glory and some of his honor and some of his his authority or we called it like this when we were studying this in Philippians he, he, he willingly separated from some of his divine prerogative he had the prerogative which Bobby would say he'll tell you about being a prerogative but, but, but Jesus said it's my prerogative I can turn water into wine if I want to I can raise the dead if I want to I can do whatever I desire to do but because I'm not trying to show you what God looks like living this out I'm trying to show you what a spirit filled believer looks like and can I tell you that's that's what Jesus did Jesus was a spirit filled believer and he gave us an example to look at and how Jesus the Bible says in John 5 that he went up to Jerusalem because of the feast why did Jesus do this because God instructed every male Jew three times a year I don't care where you were at you need to make that trek to Jerusalem 
Jerusalem, go up to Jerusalem and honor me. And we see Jesus doing what he needed to do. Listen to the point I'm trying to make. He had all power. He was God. He can do what he wanted to do. But he submitted himself and subject himself to be able to follow after the order and, pers- and follow after the prescribed order that God had for him. And so if I got power and I got ability to take some matters into my own hand, I am to not do things the way I want to do it, but I need to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith who, who gave me an example. He got all power to do what he want to do. I just got the power to say what I want to say and, and go where I want to go, but he is my ultimate example. Jesus was, was a good Jew. He was a good Jew, and the Bible says in Luke 4, it talked about how he went to the synagogue and went to the temple as was his custom, as the Bible says. It was his custom. I unpacked for you last time what this custom was. We talking about habits, right? That, that we got to, This year, we got to be willing to break break bad habits and create and maintain good ones. That, that, I believe if you me, give me some liberty, I believe that custom and habits kind of like first and second cousin. When you say, it's my, it's my custom, it's my, it's my habit. Look, look what custom is. Custom is an accepted or habitual practice of long standing. Say it plainly, Pastor. I am because I got to get to the point I want to give you. Here, 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 here. Jesus' habit was always doing what God ordained him to do. Whatever the father instructed him to do, he obeyed. That was, that was his habit. His habit was always to move closer to the father. Even, even in the garden of Gethsemane, what did he say? He said, not, he said, Lord, if it be possible, take this bitter cup away from me. He said, but not my will, but my habit is to say, let your will be done. This was his habit. This is what he did. So I, I need to ask you, what, what, what's your habit? This is what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to ask. If, G, if Jesus showed us how... A spirit-filled believer ought to submit to the word of God and the voice of God and the authority of God. I want to know what what are we doing, but sometimes we have some bad habits. Sometimes we have some things we need to kick. In fact, we got some crutches we need to kick and some things that's keeping us from enjoying God's best. What what are some things? I'm just going to get in your business for a minute and I'm going to leave you alone. I promise you, you're going to be back home as fast as you you know it. Look, look, let me take one, look at one habit here. One thing is that stops us is just spending too much time watching TV. And enjoying social media. I understand it's a sin. I'm just saying that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a habit that we have. It's a habitual habit. It's something that we do. And so anything that I do, no matter even if it's a good thing, anything that I do that I put, give top priority over the things of God, it automatically becomes a bad habit. And see, some of us, we don't even have nothing to do. Some of us, we, we just have gotten used to chilling. We've gotten used to chilling out. We've gotten used to just, uh, just kind of laying back and lounging around and just saying all is well. We've gotten used. And here, it's not, it's not so much of a bad thing, but it's just the fact that we're not even trying to do what it is that God has called us to do. So the point I'm trying to make is you can't sit there and watch six hours straight of TV. Then when it comes down for you to be able to read your word for the day, you... <laughs> So you, so you say, I'm going to read, I'm going to read all, so I'm going to read, I'm going to read, so I'm going to read Psalm 23, 24, 25, 27, and you say, the Lord is my, <laughs> so you, you know, and you don't watch six hours of shows, come on, y'all ain't going to talk to me, you don't sit here and watch a whole season, and as soon as you say, Lord is my, who I shall not, uh, oh God, all kind of stuff's out going crazy, you, and nobody tries to read, sit down and just read, the, it's like it's a little pixie devil trying to do it was with a little little sleepy juice on you as soon as you start as soon as you, and so that's the problem when it comes to spending time too much time watching tv too much time on social media the average american spend one hour a day either watching television or watching social media and i hear all my deep folks all my deep folks say, i don't be on facebook i don't be on facebook like that i don't on instagram on on chat snap or whatever it is i ain't on none, i ain't on none of that but but you you youtube the death though Video at the 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 video a whole high and you just sitting there it's innocent it's just, I'm just trying to learn how to garden I'm just trying to learn how to cook my black eyed peas and all that I got I hear I hear you but you better you better get in that word some every now and then all right so we just trying to kick some crutches that's all I'm trying to do here let me tell you next thing put 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 putting work off until the last minute come on this is you know what this is this is procrastination. 
This is what's stopping us from enjoying the life that God intends for us to have. Procrastination, putting things off until tomorrow that I can do it today. Just putting it off and putting it off. Another, another bad habit It just simply no goal setting or plans for the future. Here we're in a whole new year and we, we've, uh, all right, we'll, 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 we'll chop 2020 up. We know what happened with 2020, but now it's 2021 and now it's 2022 and we're still not planning. We still don't have any plans for the future. We're just going through the motions and living life. Life flying by the seat of our pants. That is not what God intended for us to be able to do. If I'm going to live this full life, I need to be able to manage this life that God has given me. And I need to make sure that I do I do the very best that I can. I love what this brother Larry Wingett said. I got to clean it up a little bit because I don't talk this way. But he said, he said nobody ever wrote, wrote down a plan to be broke. Thick. Lazy. Or slow. I, I cobadize it. Can I, y'all don't mind that? Can I cobadize this? I'm sorry. I, I want, I, if, I, if, I go, if I was going to change all the words, I should just put Kobe Nesbitt at the end of it. But I want to keep it, I want to give him credit. But he, he said, no, he said, you know, nobody ever wrote down a plan to be broke or, or thick or, 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 or lazy or, or a little slow. He said, those, those things are what happen when you don't have a what? A plan. No, no, nobody ever raised their hand and say, Mom, I want to be a crackhead when I grow up in school. Nobody, nobody ever went and went around the room and say, What you I want to be the president? I want to be a lawyer. I want to be the, I want to be a crackhead. Nobody ever raised their hand and say that. Nobody ever said, I want to be broke. I want to be 45 and I want to be, I want to be living with my parents. Nobody ever raised their hand and say that. But what happens when we don't plan? What happens when we think just life is going to happen to us? What happens when we think that just because we show up, things are going to be better? The devil is a lie. Let me keep on going because I got to tell you what I came to tell tonight but here can I tell you this <laughs> constantly having oh y'all ain't really gonna like this constantly having a messy workspace and living space they, they, they told me messy desk I mean a messy mind is what they told me I don't know I don't know, how, I don't know how true that is but I'm just saying that but what happens is when we're trying to get things done this is how the enemy this is how the enemy gets us distracted when we're trying to get things done when we try it's real hard for you to be able to execute something and you imprinted this same piece of paper 19 times I know it's on this desk somewhere. If you would just take a minute and file the papers or put the papers in a nice little stack, you don't print the same. I ain't got, I ain't got no ink, and now I gotta go to the store. And now, Pastor, can I come to the church and print something? And now, here, what, what am I saying? You, 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 you sit there. If you just clean your desk off just for a second, if you just take a minute and just take, then take, take a minute and be able to clean up and do what needs to be done. This is things that what we're not doing as relates to being able to live the life that God has called us to do. I am a king. Kingdom man, I'm a kingdom woman, not just how I dance, but in every part of my life. I'm not saying that there's not going to be days where things get a little out of order, things get a little messy, but the point I'm trying to make is I need to be intentional about being a good steward over the things that God has given me. I can't pray and ask God to give me a Bentley, and I don't take care of the hoop there. I can't, I can't do that. I can't, can't do that. Let me get out of here. All right, y'all didn't like that either. It's going to get better in a second here. Constantly being, look at this, I love this one. Constantly being busy. But have no reason why. You just busy. You wake up tired. You wake up busy. Just busy, 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 busy. And yet we got, we all got, we all, we all have cram schedules. We all have things. We talking about living this life. Yeah, we talking about living abundant life, right? But here, if I don't take the time to learn how to prioritize my life and here learn how to be effective at what it is that God has called me to do and not just be busy at doing things because I've told y'all a million times that the devil can't make you bad. He'll make you busy and he'll have us just around here spinning our wheels and saying, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And now at the end of the day, you're tired and now all the time is gone and trying to figure out, well, what did I accomplish today? Look for that same paper that I printed nine times. That's all I did today. Look for that same, that same, that same paper. I, I love what James Clear says. He says, every action, remember this, y'all? Every action you take is a vote for the type of person that you wish to become. Every action. Not everything that I decree and I declare. Every action. Not every scripture that I write down or, or, or not, every, not every scripture I share on social media, but it is, it is, a, it is the action that I take. And here he says that, that I, it is our habits, literally, that, that are shaped by the systems that's in our life. So this is what pastor's talking about. I know y'all don't, y'all ain't come for this and you don't want to hear me talking about no goals and doing all this type of thing. But these are the, the, the small things that we often look over and we think we can cover all this stuff up with tongues or cover all this stuff up with things with just because I can quote a verse or I can call down fire. But no, I need to organize my life 
And when I organize my life, I'll be able to see that God is going to put his hand on it. Look at John, 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 chapter, John, let me go, let me go, let me go. Yeah, okay, go, it's okay, go ahead, yeah, clap right there. All right, all right, all right, don't do it there. Look, look at this next part. This year, I must be willing not to hang with the hinder. Remember this from last time? I got I to be willing not to hang with the hinder. Look at this, John chapter 5, verse 2. It says, there, there was in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda which had five roof colonnades. We, we discussed last time that this place called Bethesda, what's the name of it mean? Anybody remember? House of mercy, house of mercy, house of mercy, house of grace. This was Bethesda. Verse 3 says, in these, it said, in these lay a multitude of invalids. In these lay a multitude of people that were hindered. They were blind. They were lame. They were paralyzed. You see the definition there for invalids. It means individuals that are debilitated, ill. They have a suffered debilitated illness. They're sick. They experience some type of personal incapacity or limited. They are weak. These are individuals that are literally congregating together and as they're congregating together they're congregating together with people who have a similar if not the same issue that they have they're congregating together this place called house of mercy this place called bethesda and they're congregating there not trying to embed their situation not trying to do better not trying to obtain not trying to do what they can do in their in their in their sphere of influence or what the energy god has given them or the strength that god has given them they simply just hanging out with people who got the same issue they have I think that, that sounds oftentimes like the, like the same uh, with, the, with the body of Christ, with the people of God. If we're going to be able to kick some crutches, we got to be willing not to hang with people who just who just content with hanging. I, I can't be around people who are just content with just with the status quo and just intent. And then, and then people, people who want more or people who strive for excellence, they'll say, oh, you just extra. Or, oh, you just, oh, it don't take all of that. Or, oh, why you got to do this and why you got to do that? Who, who you think you are? And really don't, don't have no goals, no aspirations. You're trying to do something, obtain something, have a business, have, have dreams, have books, and got this and that in your heart and in your soul. They'll think, oh, you just trying to be up in it. You're trying to be, no, I'm just, I'm just not content with hanging around, the, hanging around folk that just got the same problem and the same issue that I have I, 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 I unpacked that a little better last time but just go back and listen to it but I got the roll because I got to give you what I came to give you look at this next one because this year I will not be crippled by not being aware by not being aware by not being aware because here these individuals they was, they was crippled and they was congregating in this place called Bethesda as they was there they was there they, 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 they were there on a false hope. They were there looking for, longing for something to happen that God never told them will happen. They're just there, they're just there not being aware. Look, look, look let's, let's read this together. Remember, we read this verse of scripture together in John chapter 5, verse number 4, English Standard Version. Come on, let's read it. John chapter 5, verse 4. Come on, it's on the screen. Come on, let's read it together. Ready, read. One, two, three. It ain't there. <laughs> remember this? Remember, remember, remember this, this verse is not, is not in, the, in our later, in our later translations because here we, we discover some of the later, or some of the first century, closer to the first century manuscripts back in the day. And when we discovered those manuscripts, these, these verses were not in there. Verse 3 and verse 4, it was not in there. What's the point? Some, 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 some editor, some, some person that helped compile God's word, they weren't trying to dupe us and trying to fool us. They were trying to give us a picture remember I talked this they're giving us a picture of why the people were gathered around the pool they were trying to tell, let us know what the superstition was it was a superstition for the people gathered around the pool let us know the superstition passes right here in verses 3 and 4 John chapter 5 verse 3 and 4 says in these days it's gonna bless you you got to stick with me though in these days a great multitude of impotent folk a blind halt with waiting they were, they were they were gathered together waiting for the moving of the water that's what they were gathered together. This is this is this is some of our some of our uh, some of our later um, translations have have this in it. But some of our earlier was like New New American Standard and English Standard. We don't have that in there because we discovered some more manuscripts, and that's cool. Verse four. This is what they was waiting on. For for they were waiting for an angel. For an angel went down at a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. 
Whosoever then was first after the trouble of the water stepped in and was made whole and whatsoever disease he had, he was healed or whatever disease he had. What, what, what's, the, what's the point I'm trying to make you all? See, oftentimes, oftentimes as, as believers, we want to hang our hat on things or we want to wait on something extra to happen. And we think when something extra will happen, then this is where my deliverance or my breakthrough will come from. And see, oftentimes, see, we preach good messages off this. We sung songs off these verses. Trouble the water, Lord. Trouble, trouble the water. But no, but this, this is this is this is just a superstition that the people had. This was a superstition that the people thought was going on. They they was at this pool of Bethesda, and they were because of it, it was a hot springs. It was almost like jumping in the jacuzzi, and the water would do some kind of therapeutic for their body, and it would help them. And they would think it was healed. I stepped in the water, and my feet looked new, and they did, and they doing all this. Stuff. There was no angel. That was just the water was therapeutic. But the point I'm trying to make is, the point I'm trying to make is that you and I, oftentimes around the things of God, we often do the same thing. We don't seek God, we seek a miracle. We don't seek God. We want something extra. And in our day and time, we've gotten we've gotten so 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 seduced with, with miracles and with and with demon casting out and with prophecies and all these types of things. And here, if we will seek the Christ, we'll be able to be able to receive everything that we need. If we will seek the Christ, He'll be able to give us all these things. He said, "These signs shall follow those who those follow those." But we want something extra, and we want to do something different. These superstitious things that if I just jump on my three times if I, if I name it and then claim it and then grab it and grab it and all this is just superstition can I tell you that God doesn't operate off of your superstition God does not flow off of my what, what I suppose he's going to do God does not flow off of, off of grandma religion no he doesn't I, I took a better time to explain that let me keep on going because here uh, read Ephesians 6 we get a chance to talk about we got the build of truth but here this is another decree another decree am I doing all right y'all I'm trying to get to a point am I doing okay okay I'm trying to get to a point let me get to a point come on here we go this year I, I, I'm just trying to set the context so you can understand what we will be talking about tonight Th this year I will be I will not be crippled by being comfortable in what and dysfunction. Didn't I give y'all that? Because I think this kind of where we, where we began to kind of stop last, la last time. I can't be comfortable in dysfunction. Look at it. John 5, 5. It says, one man was there. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. I love this. And I'm going to go. I, I, there's, many theologians suggest, Sister Ruth, it's thousands of people there. It, 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 normal, under normal circumstances, it could be hundreds of people because it's a feast. They, they think it's thousands of people there. I, I love this because in John chapter 5, verse 5, you see what Jesus Christ is saying, what he's saying. The Bible says, the Bible says a multitude was there. In yeah. John chapter 5, verse 5, it says, and, and hundreds were there. I hear somebody over here. Somebody over here catching me. It was, it was John chapter 5, verse 5. It says, and one man was there. The, the, point, the point I'm trying to make is, is that oftentimes we, will, we, we like to deal with what's fair in the kingdom. You, you think because you've been on your job for 20 years and you work for 20 years, you think that you think it's only fair for a person who just got hired for you to make more money than them. I've been here 20 years. I helped build a company. Yada, yada. I make this amount. They just got hired. They need to be up under me. When we, if you hear somebody making more money than you, you've been there for 20, 30 years, we finna have a problem. Uh, Ma'am, ma can, can I come in? Can I come sit down in your office? Can I come talk to you? Because I don't know. And I train them and all that. And that's fine. That's how you're doing your job. That's fine. The kingdom don't work that way. <laughs> God don't work in fairness. Oh, you, oh, let me give you a parable. Let me give you a parable. A parable of where he, he, he said, I hired some folk. And then one, he, he had people that worked from the get bright all the way to get dark. The people that have been out there all day in the heat of the day, they got the same pay as the people that he called at the end of the day. And then when they tried to challenge him on his goodness, he said, you're going to challenge me because I'm good. I pay what I want to pay. The point I'm trying to make is, is that Jesus, the Lamb of God, the perfect man, who, who was here on earth. It was thousands of people here that was crippled, thousands of people that needed a miracle. He stepped over all of them and went to one man. He stepped over everybody and went to one man. See, you would think, you would think, in our mind, we'll say, uh, Jesus healed thousands of people. And there are places in the scripture that heal. The Bible says multitudes and multitudes. But every now and then, God is, in, God is in dealing in what you think is fair and what you think is right. Every now and then, when it's your time, it's your time. When it's your time, it's your time. When it's your time, it's your time. When it's my time, it's my time. And God don't need nobody vote. 
He stepped right over all them people. Excuse me. 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 And came to this one man. And went right back. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. It didn't say he healed all these other people. It wasn't their time. It wasn't their season. It wasn't their time. Y'all ain't going to help me here. <laughs> Isn't that good? That ain't fair. It's, uh, how, come, how, come I, how come I ain't got married yet? How come I ain't got my house yet? How come, I've been saved for 40 years. God don't operate like that. But can I encourage you? The longer you wait, the bigger your blessing going to be. Lord have mercy. The longer you wait, when God finally do call your number. Let me get out of here. That ain't what I came to tell you, but I just want to tell you that real quick. <laughs> his brother, his brother was here. I didn't come tell you that. I said, that's just a little, that's just an aside, just an aside. I, I love that because we try to deal with fairness. It's not about fair. It's not about fair. It's about favor. <laughs> it's not about fair. It's about favor. Let me, dysfunction, this brother wasn't operating the way he needs to operate. Let me, let me give come to what I came to tell you. Here, John 5, 6, next verse. John 5, 6, the Bible says, when Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that, that he had already been there a long time. Here, we'll see at the end of the story exactly what Jesus, what, what, what was going on in Jesus' heart. Jesus knew this brother. He knew this brother's condition. He knew where he was at. See, just reading this on the surface, we, we, when we start reading that, well, how Jesus interacted, we'll be like, why Jesus did that man like that? But here, the Bible said Jesus knew he was, he was, he had been laying there a long time. And since I know the benefit of the end of the story, I can say that this John writes this and John said, this brother been laying here way too long. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what John is saying because I know the benefit of the end of the story because he's been, he's been lying here way too long. He's just been laying there for this brother had this issue for 38 years and he's still been lying there, just laying there and just sitting and soaking and crying about where he's at and what he's going through. And the only big point I'm trying to make to you is that how long will you just lay there? How long will you just sit there? How long will you keep on talking about what it is that's going on in your life? Oh, I don't got time to unpack all these other verses, but this brother been sitting there for 30 he'd been going through what he'd been going through for 38 years and sometimes you and I can be going through what we've been going through for so long we don't want we, we don't even expect things to change we don't expect things to turn around. We don't even expect the breakthrough. We don't even expect God to do anything. I've told you about learn helplessness already. I've told you about the house of mercy. It will become your house of misery when you live in mediocrity and hear a place that's supposed to bring you help and hope and solace and peace and comfort. It can be your demise when you don't move. Can I tell you nothing? Mm. Let's say it right. Let me say it the right way. It's not so much that some people don't like you. It's just the fact that your motivation exposes them. <clears throat> it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not so much it's not so much that people take issue with you. It's the fact that because of the fact you're so tenacious, you're so, you're so determined, you're, you're so goal-oriented, you know what God has said to you, that it exposes their laziness, it exposes their mediocrity, because you're doing more with less. They got more, they have more time, more experience, more money, more support, but you got a little bit, and you're making your little bit work. Lord have mercy, can I tell you that everybody, everybody, that's not, that's not a, it's not a, don't take it personal, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. When, 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 again, it's not, about, it's not about fairness. It's about favor. It's, it's about favor. I, I, I got about four or five stories I can tell right there, but I don't got time. Here it is. This is where we stop. This year, I will not be crippled by not answering crucial questions. Look, look what Jesus does to his brother. Let me just give y'all. I'm just going to give y'all the points because I don't got time to unpack all this. John 5 and 6 says, and when, when Jesus noticed him lying there helpless, <clears throat> knowing him, he had already been there a long time in that condition, he said to him, don't miss this, y'all. Do you want to become well? Are you really in earnest? Are you really serious about getting well? You would think when we hear that, man, we'll be like, why would you ask this man this? It's like asking a, a man dying of thirst, do you want some water? What you think? <laughs> I'm, I'm starving. <laughs> and you asking me, do I want something to eat? Yes. Yeah, I want something to eat. Yeah, duh, duh, I want something to eat. But it, it's more than just that. Because Jesus sees the heart of this brother. 
And Jesus never deals with, see, see, we just, we just see people on the outside, but the Lord deals with us, how, how, what, what's going on in our heart. He knows what we can handle. He knows what we can't handle. And he sees our heart. And Jesus said, do you really want to become? Well, I hear you saying in 2022, your year, your year elevation. Do you really want to be elevated? Do you really want to come out? Do you really want to break through? Do you really want this thing to shift and to change? And to do? Jesus said, do you really want to be whole? Do you really want to be healed? This is what Jesus is asking them. Look at the definition. It means to be whole, to be sound, to be healthy, having a dignity of good health, body and mind, free from infirmity or disease. And Jesus is asking his brother, do you really want? Jesus is not asking this brother this question to try to gain information. Jesus is trying to give him some information and say, you're sitting here like you want to be whole. You're sitting here like you want things to turn around but you know you're not serious about your breakthrough you know you're not serious about your delivery if you was really f- serious about your breakthrough you still wouldn't be doing those things that broke you down yeah. <laughs> and we get up out of here dun, 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 here's some crucial here's some crucial questions Let me, here's some here's some crucial questions somebody say kick the crutch Am I, am I using God to run from God? This is what we, am I, am I using God to, to, to run from God? Like, am I, am I, am I using, using God? Listen, I don't got no, I ain't, I ain't got no, no saliva now. I got, I got crutches. I ain't got no saliva. Are you, are you, are you using God to, to, to run from God? And I'll say something about that a little later. Uh, but cause, cause sometimes. Our crutch, we don't get, we don't get delivered. We don't, we, we, we can't straighten up and stand up the way that God desires for us to straighten up and stand up because we so busy acting like we serving God and we don't slow down to hear from God. <laughs> Sometimes we so busy doing, we'll see in a moment. That we don't do. Somebody say kick the crutch. Kick the crutch. So, so, sometimes you can stand up and you can do what you need to do. But you, you too, you're too busy. You're too busy running. And here, what else will we do? And, and my, let me ask you this crucial. It's a crucial question. Jesus said, do you really want to be made whole? Yeah. I'm going to ask you these crucial questions. Am I, am I ignoring? Ask yourself. Am I ignoring the emotions of anger and sadness and fear? Uh, what's wrong? You've you been with somebody all this time. You've been with them for four years, five years, ten years. Gave them the best years of your life. And now it's over. And now you don't take no time for healing. Take no time for renewal. Take no time. What, what's going on? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm okay. No, that doesn't sound like you're okay. I, and I don't, and you can, you can fake it with your decibels or your voice. You can say all the right things. But I know if you love somebody for real and they were there and now they're gone, you got something going on in there. But because I don't want, I don't want them to think that I miss them, I'm good. I don't, uh, you you ain't can't keep can't keep a good pimp down. No, ain't gonna give no pimp down. No, uh, you ain't you ain't finna, you ain't gonna get the best of me. No, I'm good. And just ignoring your emotions and what you're doing is you're just compiling all those emotions and they're erupting in every other area of your life. Am I am I dying? Am I dying to the wrong things? Look at this. Let me ask you this crucial question. Am I dying to the wrong things? Oftentimes in our spiritual journey, when things get tough, we often die to the wrong things. Oftentimes in our spiritual journey, instead of me dying to myself, instead of me dying to my attitude, instead of me dying to the things that are keeping me away from God, I start dying to the things of God. And I start detaching from God and detaching from the work of God and detaching from what God has called me to do. And I'm dying to the wrong thing. And I'm thinking that those things have me in a place that I don't need to be in. I'm not going to serve in this season. I'm not going to sing in this season. I ain't going to preach in this season. I ain't going to do. But we're dying to the wrong thing. God said, I'm not after what you do. I'm after you. (laughs) Oh, God. Am I denying the past impact on my present? I skipped one. No. Am I denying the past impact on, on the present? I'm getting there. Am I denying the past impact on my present? What, what happened to you? Who, who dropped you? Don't, don't stay back there. I don't want you to stay back there. But you've got to get back to who dropped you? Who lied to you? Who hurt you? And we never get to the place. Some of us, see, some of us, it's it's intensive. Some of us can't get over the drop. And some of us can't get over the drop because we don't acknowledge the drop. (laughs) 
Oh, man, you work at this thing. Let me get out of here. I'm, let me get out of here. I'm just, I'm just, uh, am I, I'm asking some crucial questions. Am I, am I dividing my life into secular and sacred compartments? What you, what you mean, bro, Pastor? We say silly stuff like this. Oh, oh, I, I don't lie in church. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you, Pastor, now. Yeah, you're kind of not supposed to be lying at all, you know. You kind of, kind of. Oh, you. I, 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 I almost used some choice words. We better be glad I'm in church. <laughs> what, what, what I mean? The, 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 the power in this, and I got to hurry. The power in this is that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is so powerful. It's supposed to affect every area of my life. This is why I'm always talking about holistic living. This is the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel is just not supposed to make me. I just don't have a Sunday morning anointing or a Thursday anointing. But no, the, the power, I don't compartmentalize my life and say, I act this way with the church people. I act this way with my family. I act this way on the job. I act this way, this way. And I act this way when I'm around the boys. This way when I'm at home. No, I don't, that's not how the gospel ought to be. But because when God touched my life, every part of me, everybody around me, gonna get impacted by what God has done in my life. I'm just trying, I'm trying to kick, I'm trying to kick your crutches. This one I want to get to. I'm gonna get to this one. I'm doing, I already alluded to this. I'm, I'm doing for God instead of being with God. Y'all got that already. You know what that is. Just doing, 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 working and working and working. That's why I challenge people. You need to sit one, serve one. Don't be serving and serving and serving and serving. You're going to dry like a razor. Don't be out there in the parking lot, out there in the, in the Sahara Desert, out there for six months straight, serving, serving. Don't never come get no word. Never get no word. He be like, well, where's so-and-so? They, they never got no worship. They never got no word. Well, they just serve and serve and serve and serve and serve and serve. And here, no, don't do that. Doing for God and don't ever be with him. That's your responsibility to be able to govern your own spiritual diet. Not, they keep putting me on the schedule. They you know, say, no, I need some word. Don't put me out. I don't care if them kids got to flip over the chair. I don't care, I don't care if you got to put the kids up there with pastor. I need some word. Come on. I need some worship. Don't, 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 don't keep serving him. And don't. No, y'all don't like that. It's okay. I'm just trying to, trying to pass my little church. I'm passing my little church here. Here, here, here this, is what, this is what we love to do. And my spiritual lives in a way conflict. We like to blame everything on the devil. Every, everything. Can, can, I, can I tell on myself? Because y'all don't like when I tell on y'all. Y'all can I tell on myself? I, 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 told, I told Noonday, I said, I said, yeah, yeah, I, I, Lady C, me and Lady C, next month be 17 years we'll be together. Be 17 years. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and listen, I, I, was, I, was in, I was in my drawer. I was getting prepared. And I was going through. I, was, I couldn't find my socks. I was trying to find my socks. I was like, man, where my socks? Where my socks? I'm going through finding my socks. And I got my tank tops. I got a certain, I'm, I'm a little funny now. I'm a little funny. I got my tank tops in a certain spot. I got my, you know, my little garments in a certain spot. Got my socks in a certain place. And I'm going, I can't find my stuff. And then, then as I'm finding, I'm, I'm getting mad. I'm like, I'm, I've been married to this girl for 17 years. Come on. I've been married almost 20 years, almost two decades. And she know where I put my socks. She know where I put my tank top. She know where I put all my stuff at. Where, where, what is she doing? And it dawned on me. Say, I washed the clothes. But I washed the clothes, but she'd been fussing at me for 17 years to stop washing the clothes, putting them in it. Come on, oh, y'all got the same problem? Put them in the dryer. And come on, I'm, 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 come on, baby, because I'm a thug. I go get a sock out the dryer, I go get, I just move stuff around. I, I pick and clean. I can live out the dryer now. Y'all ain't said nothing to me now. I can live out. Don't you do me like that, Sister Vine. And so right when I was getting mad, I was literally getting mad. I was literally about to say, baby, I told you a thousand times where you put my stuff at. And then Holy Ghost say, why didn't you, big dummy, why didn't you just take the stuff out to dry yourself and put them where you needed it? Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me here. And, here. and see, see, you be, uh, see when we over-spiritualize stuff, see, see, the devil and jumped in, lady, see. Yes, sir. Trying to aggravate me. She know I got to get my mind together to worship. Them feet, them people bother me on that job. No, no, you was late. Uh, no, no, you, no, you, you, you. Oh, my, my husband, my wife. No, no, you just need to sit down and talk. You, some of us so deep that where we, we, we so shallow, we'll drown in a little, a little teacup of water. We, we, but we so, we so deep, but we so shallow. We can't do nothing because we just over spiritualize everything. We'll never deal with nobody. Don't never deal with nothing. We will never have no serious conversation. We don't never see ourselves. How in the world you always right? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Here we go, climbing the stairway, 
here, man. Let me go. Am I, am I coming? Am I doing all right, y'all? I'm trying to kick the crutch. I'm just trying to kick my crutch here. I just talked about me, y'all. I ain't talking about y'all. I said, I got mad because my socks weren't what they supposed to be. Look, it says, am I covering over, over brokenness, weakness? We've already kind of dealt with that one. And here is one I want to give you, and we got to get out of here. Am I, am I living without limits? you just being everybody's superstar, everybody messiah. You can't live God's best if you live your life without limits. Because the first thing you're going to X out, the first person you X out, the first activity you X out is the one that belongs to God. And what we, and, and what we do, and people, people don't understand, I had to learn this tough way in ministry. If you can't respect my boundaries... If you can't respect that I need to rest, you need to respect that I need time with my family. If you can't respect I need time with my church. You can't respect my boundaries. Then you got a little, a little place of entitlement. And here, some of your family and some of your friends and some of the people that suppose they know you the best, they'll disrespect you the most. Yeah. And want you to run and run and go and go and do and do. Want you to be the everything. Want you to be on every call and every little thing they need. And every little time they, they breathe hard, they want you there. But no, you got to have some limits. So every now and then you got to learn this word. Come on, let's say it together, y'all. It's going to hurt y'all. It's, not, it's difficult to do. But if you're going to go from 2021 into 2022 and be able to live what it, how God wants to live, we got to learn this word together. It's spelled N-O. Let's say it together. No. Come on. You got you to learn how to tell people every now and then. No, I can't come. No, I can't be there. No, I can't come be your rescue. Your 911 can't be my emergency. <laughs> let me go. Let me go. Let me go. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to get out of here. Tony Robbins quote. I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. Tony Robbins quote. Y'all just read that. That'll bless you. That's self explanatory. The sick man said, here, Jesus said to him, Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Look what Jesus said. Do you want to be made whole? Look at his response. John 5, 7. The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool. I don't know. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm in the draw, though, Sister Cecilia. I'm in the draw. I don't see, I don't see anywhere where Jesus asked him that. Jesus said, do you want to be whole for real? He said, nobody helping me. I got no one assisting me. No one is there. My, my, my daddy won't call me back. My mom and them don't believe in me. And, and all this. He said, do you want to be made whole? I'm trying to help you kick your crutch because so oftentimes we spend so much time blaming people for where we are. Instead of owning and respecting and hearing what God has said, God asked us, do you really, do you really want to be made whole? Let me get out of here because, because here I told you apathy will find an excuse, but passion will find a way. But that's not what I want to stop. Here, this, this year, come on, make this declaration. This year, I will not be crippled by not obeying his word. Here, here, this brother been in this condition for 38 years, and Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Not do you want to be stroked? Not do you want to be pacified? Not do you want somebody to just accuse you up and stroke you down? That's not what Jesus said. Do you want to be made whole? So look at what Jesus said. Look at this command that he gives them in John chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible said, Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed and walk, Lord have mercy. And I come by to tell you, my friend, it doesn't matter how long you've been in it. I don't matter how long you've been, in, you've been bothered by no matter how long it's keep you keep you bow keep you crippled I don't care how long you've had those crutches but the Lord can tell you that you can kick the crutches my friend because the word of the Lord said get up somebody say get up get get up get up means to stand up get up means to arise get up means oh you mean to tell get up means to elevate is what God is saying God is saying elevate get up from your crying get up from your complaining get up from your murmuring get up from always saying nobody help you get up from saying you miss your best time. Get up from saying that your better days are behind you. Get up from you saying I woulda, I coulda, I shoulda. Get up and do what God has called you to do. God said get up. Somebody say get up. He said get up, take up your bed, lift up, lift it up and, and walk up. With it. You read those verses. All those verses speak to just obeying God. He gave him three commands. Get up, he said. Take up your bed. That thing that was carrying you, now you carry it. I gotta go. I don't got time. I'm, I'm done. The Bible says in John 5, this story don't end the way you think it ends. I got to just give it to you. This story don't end the way you think it does. You would think, here, let me, let me read these two verses and I'm done. John 5, 9 says, and at once the man was healed. He took up his bed and, and walked. Now, that day was the Sabbath. You would think, this is where I would end. In my immaturity as a young preacher, I would end right here. He got up. Ha, I heard. He, he was healed. He took up his bed and walked. Ha, no, that's what I, I would stop. I would stop right there. That, that's, that's good preaching right there to me. But but John lets us know that it was a Sabbath. John, there's never a waste for words in the Bible. There's never a waste for words in the Bible. John, why are you telling us that it was a Sabbath? 
Verse 10. So the Jews, who are the religious leaders, said to the man who had been healed. Is it, is it the, is it the, he said, is it the Sabbath? And not, it's not lawful for you to take up your bed. The religious leaders don't care this brother been healed. They care, he carrying his bed. They so stuck in religion. This brother been down for 38 years. And they don't even care that God has done something. They don't even care that his brother got up. They're trying to figure out why, why you doing all that? Why you 21 days of fasting for what? What you praying in the morning? When you on a prayer call this morning? You must like him or something. You on a prayer call in the morning and night? What's going on? What, what you doing all that for? You giving your money. What? 33 strong? Who? 43 strong? What? All right. John 5, 11. Look what happens. I just got to give it to you. Y'all give me a little grace, y'all. We, we, y'all raise him with playing around and get started. Let me say, John 5, 11 says, but, 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 when, but, when they, but when they answered them, the man who was healed. Look at this. He said, he said, but he answered them, the man who healed me, that said to me, take up your bed and walk. Verse 12. Then they asked him, who is the man that told you to take up your bed and walk? Here, this brother don't even know Jesus. So it has to, it got to be a question that must be asked. Can Jesus bless me and I not know him? Can I, be, be, can I be blessed by him? Can he give me something that I've been longing for all my life? The biggest thing I've ever wanted from him. 38 years I've been bound. And the Lord healed me. This brother don't even know who Jesus is. So the Bible tells me in Psalm 37, fret not yourself for evildoers. Just because somebody got a lot, because they blessed, because they delivered, because they got all this stuff. And don't you think that that deduced them that they're all right with God. That's not how that works. I don't got time to unpack these enemies of the church. I'll give them to you another time. I don't got time. Just fill in enemies of the church. I'm going to get this last thing and I'm done. Y'all, y'all come this way. If I got any musicians here, come on, let me wrap this, wrap this thing up. It just says that this year I will not be crippled by the, in, the enemies of the church. I'm not going to be crippled by the enemies of the church. I, I'll unpack these another time. I've given them to you before. But these, here they worried about the Sabbath and Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Skip through all of those verses like we did. Skip through all those verses about the persecution. I just want to show you this, this instance between this brother that Jesus just healed and, and, the, and the Jesus healed his brother in John chapter 5. This is what started the Jews wanting to kill him. All these verses I just gave you, it just points out. And when you see it in John chapter 5 and John chapter 8 and John chapter 9, John chapter, all these verses just, detail, just give us details that these brothers hated Jesus. They, this miracle was not put here to show us this was the miracle. This was put here to show the response of the people. To show us the heart of the religious people and show us the heart of even this blind man. Because look what this blind man did. Verse 15, John 5, 13. Skip all the way down. John 5, 13 says, now the man who had been healed did not know, did not know who, he, who it was. For, for look what it says. For Jesus had withdrawn and there was a crowd in the place. Here it is. Look, here, feel this in last thing. And you're going, it's going to bless you. It's worth, the, it's worth the wait. This year I will not be crippled by going back. I, I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it. Here. He, I just told you he didn't know he didn't know Jesus, right? Look at verse fourteen. It's okay, y'all. Am I boring y'all? Let me give you this. Let me get this. I'm done. I'm done. John five fourteen says, "Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, this is the brother that was healed. He said, See, you are well. I healed you.' Look what he says. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. So we have a president here that this particular brother was in what he was in because of his sin." So there are some things that you and I can cause on ourselves. Not all, not all things now. Because in John 9, his brother said, he said, Master, who did sin? Nobody sinned. Nobody sinned. His brother's sickness was for the glory of God. But the point is, Jesus said that you think what was on you was something. If you keep on sinning, it's going to be something worse that's going to happen to you. But look at his brother's response. What would, what would our response be? If I've been down for 38 years, this brother stepped over all these people to come to me, tell me, ask me a question, tell me to rise up and get up, take up my bed and walk. And then he comes to me and tells me, don't go back sinning, but follow me. What you think our response will be? You'll be excited. You'll follow him. You'll do whatever you need to do. Look at his brother's response, John 5, 15. The man went away and told the Jews. That it was Jesus who healed him. He ratted Jesus out. He went and snitched. He got his healing 
and went right because he was so scared of the, of the enemies of the church. I don't got time to talk about enemies, the tradition, law, first truth, and all the religion, and all this stuff. This brother was more, he was more, he was more attracted to just being right with the Pharisees and the Sadducees than he was about walking with the one that healed him. What's your big point, Pastor? My big point is this, that you and I can have a crutch. You and I can have a crutch of prosperity, a crutch of healing, a crutch of a prophetic word, a crutch of preaching the word, a, a crutch of God manifesting in my life. And just because God manifests in my life don't mean that, he's, that I'm right with him. This is why Pastor Colby keeps the main thing the main thing. This is why we walk through the word of God as bored as y'all be. Y'all be like, oh, God, I'm so tired of walking through this. I mean, times we got to go through first Peter. I mean, times it's just one verse, Pastor. You got to preach an hour and ten minutes on one verse. My God, sir, why you do this to us? Because it, it is not my theatrics. <laughs> it's not my theatrics that's going to help you. It's not how eloquent I can talk. It's not about me being able to call your name out and telling you what you ate for breakfast today. It's not about me telling you this and saying this and what happened to you when you was three and what happened to you when you was four. That's not going to help you. But the word, <laughs> but, when I, but when I put enough word down in your heart, when I put enough word down in your spirit, that's the thing that helps. That's why I don't let nobody move me. Pastor, we ought to be doing this. Pastor, we ought to be doing that. No, we need this word right now. We need this word right now. When we get this word... We continue to build and continue to pour this foundation that God has for us. It doesn't matter what comes our way. This brother got a miracle. He got a miracle. He got a breakthrough. And he still ratted out Jesus. And some of us can walk in our prosperity, get everything we've been longing for, looking for, and we're going to still, if, if our heart isn't right, all that stuff doesn't matter. On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L Jax, one word, T-I-L Jax to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jax, Download our app and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity and we love you and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.